Number 40, predict the valence electron molecular orbital configurations for the following and state whether they will be stable or unstable ions. And then we have Al2, 2 plus. Okay, so in order to write the molecular orbital configuration for this molecule, we first have to find out how many valence electrons we're dealing with. And this all comes from the group number of aluminum. And if I look on the periodic table, aluminum is in either group, and we'll put it over here. Aluminum is either in group 3A or 13. It really just depends on what um, periodic table you're looking at. So 3A or 13, the lucky number is three. Aluminum generally has three valence electrons, but we have two aluminums. So if I have two aluminums and each of them have three valence electrons, I have to times them by three. So two times three is six valence electrons. I'm just gonna put val electrons. But can't be that easy. There's a plus two charge. And remember, plus two means, or you know, plus in general, means that you're going to lose electrons. In this case, you're going to lose two electrons. So from that six, I have to minus the two electrons that I'm going to lose. And six minus two is a total now of four valence electrons. And this is total for both of the aluminums. So this is gonna be very important in a little bit. Now the next thing is, is to figure out the mess down at the bottom of the screen, which is this. Now these are your standard valence electron molecular orbital configurations. There's only two, but they are different because of where they're positioned on the periodic table and they go by different groups. So if you have a element that's in group one, two, three, four, or five, right? 3A, 4A, or 5A, you will be following this molecular orbital configuration. For all the other groups, six, seven, and eight, AKA 6A, 7A, and 8A, you'll follow the one at the bottom. But since we just said that we are in group 3A, we are going to use the top one. So I'm gonna pull this upward. And if you want to pause the video to write down the other generic valence electron molecular orbital diagram, go for it. But I'm just gonna get rid of it just so that we have more space here. So bye-bye. And now I can say that this is gonna be Al2, two plus its molecular orbital configuration. All right, so now how are we going to fill this up, right? How are we gonna make it aluminums? Well, as you can see here, I have little spacer markers for blue and yellow highlighter that just um, are blank here, but this is for you to fill in where your valence electrons are located. Now, if we're talking about S and Ps, this goes by the period. So if we just dig a little deeper, aluminum was in group three, but it's also in period three. And the period number for S and Ps are your principal quantum number. So since we're in period three, we're going to be labeling this specifically as 3S and 3S, and then all threes all around. All these spacers get, you know, buzzed in with a three. Now just know that all of these little, you know, groups, those are your molecular orbitals. So I have a sigma 3S molecular orbital, and I have a pi, 3P uh, molecular orbital. Remember, there's three different types of Ps. There's Px, Py, and Pz. And just know that for every bonding orbital you make, aka something that does not have a star in the upper right-hand corner, these are bonding. So all the ones that have no stars, those are bonding. And the ones that do have the stars, those are your antibonding. Just know that as you're going from left to right, you are gaining in energy. So when we start dropping these four valence electrons in, you're only allowed to start here and go from left to right. So let's do that. Now comes the numbers in the upper right-hand corner. 
These are where you're going to place your electrons, but in aluminum's case, you only got four of them. But I gotta start at the bottom. I can't, I, I have to fill in this molecular orbital before I go on to the next, and then I gotta fill this one in before I go on to the next. So, for every orbital, you got a max of two electrons, just like in electron configuration. So, I need to get to four, so I'm going to fill this one up. This one's going to have a two. Now I come over here, I need to fill this one up before I move on, so this will be a two. But wait a minute, two plus two is four. So, I'm done. I'm only allowed four electrons. So the buck stops here, which means that all the other ones technically are not filled. So zero, zero, zero. And the rule of thumb is, for a molecular orbital configuration, you only have to write up until the last electron that's in your orbital. So as far as all this stuff, I can get rid of it. Um, it's just easier to just memorize the molecular orbital configuration, the whole thing, because then you could always just get rid of the stuff that you don't need. And here is the answer. Now, we just have to stay, say whether Al22 plus is going to be stable or unstable. Well, this now comes from the bond order. The bond border. <laughs> the bond order. Now, generally speaking, the, the, the thing here is that you don't want to see a zero when we do our formula. If you have a zero, that means no bond is going to form, and that's an unstable ion. So let's see. What's the bond order formula? It's this one right here. So bond order equals your number of bonding electrons minus your number of antibonding divided by two. Now keep in mind, remember, that we said anytime that you see a star, that's your antibonding electrons. No star is bonding. So let's group together. How many bonding electrons do we have? Well, this one is bonding. There's two. This one is antibonding. So I only have a total of two electrons here. And I have two electrons for antibonding. So I'm just going to throw it into the formula. And you probably can see what's going to happen. This would be two minus two divided by two. <laughs> Subtraction first, two minus two is zero. Zero divided by two, zero divided by anything is zero. And what did we just say, right? If you have a zero as your bond order, that means no bond. Absolutely no bond. So no bond is gonna be formed between the two aluminums. So if no bond's going to be formed, is it going to be stable? Nah, right? This is a unstable ion. So whenever you get a, a zero as your answer, that's always an unstable ion. And you're done. What'd you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. I hope you're all doing a great uh, job out there studying. I hope you're having a great day. All right? Keep studying hard, and I will talk to you in later lessons. Bye-bye.